Hey everybody, this is Nicole with Topaz. Thanks for joining me here today for our Quick Tip Thursday webinar. Today's topic, we're going to be discussing the advanced toning possibilities in Adjust 5. We're going to be covering two of our um, brand new finishing touches categories, which is the warmth category, which is a very simple one slider type of move to either add warmth or coolness into your image, and then also our tone tab, which is a quad tone type of technology, very similar to the, that that is found in black and white effects, and we're going to go over that and how each of those sliders work. So today we're going to be looking at this image here. We're going to be um, going over a couple of different toning possibilities, so I'm just going to make a big a background copy and hop on into Adjust 5. If you are interested in a more um, thorough webinar about Topaz Adjust 5, definitely check out our YouTube channel. I'll send that link to you in the follow-up email where you can look at an introduction webinar. Today we're specifically talking about the toning ability. So I'm just going to go ahead and say reset all down here in the lower right and I'm going to open up my finishing touches. Again we're going to be talking about the warmth and the tone here today. So in the warmth category you have a very simple one slider type of move to add a little bit of warmth if you go towards the positive, here's before, here's after, or a little bit of coolness, here's before, here's after. I'll add a little bit more coolness so you can really see the difference. Here's before and after. And then if you open up, let's just uncheck that guy, if we open up our tone tab, this is a quad toning technology that I will go in to in just a moment, but before I do that, I do want to show you a few of the presets um, that really utilize the toning, the advanced toning in Adjust 5. So I know if you already have Adjust 5, you know that there are tons new presets in, in this program, over a hundred, and many of them were created or able to, to look the way they are because of the tone. So let's select this autumn preset. Here's before, here's after, and I'm just going to open up my finishing touches and you can see right here if I open up my tone, that those have all been uh, selected and my warmth has also been selected here for me. So that is what is helping these presets out. We have all different types of presets that really use this toning. Summer, winter, this is our vibrance category. In the film collection, most of these presets definitely use the tone, if not the warmth as well. We have these bleach type presets which utilize a lot of white tone and then these cross-processing presets which if you open up again you'll see exactly what tones are being used for that preset. All different sorts of fun stuff that you can really achieve with these toning. So let's talk more about the tone tab itself uh, while we're in the tone collection to kind of demonstrate exactly um, how this tone tab works, I do want to show you an image. Let me just cancel out of here. And I'm going to show you something from our Quad Tone Quick Tip Thursday that we went over in black and white effects because it's a very similar technology. Your image goes from, your tonal scale of your image goes from 0 to 255. 0 being black and 255 being white. Within the Tone tab, you're going to have four tones, like you can see over here that you will be placing on a tonal scale, each one going from 0 all the way to 255. And based upon what tone you put where on your tonal scale is how that tone is going to be achieved. So let's go ahead and jump right back into this and I will show you exactly what I'm talking about. And actually I'm going to go to my collection because I a couple presets here for this one. So let's take a look at this preset first here for you. Actually to better demonstrate this I did want to show you this one preset and actually this is perfect. So as you can see right here, let me show you actually how that was done. 
Here we have a blueprint preset in our stylized collection. This definitely uses this tone, and if you open up the tone, you'll see that there's only two tones in this preset, a more cream white tone and a dark blue tone. If we want to change that, I'm going to put four tones within the image. All you have to do to select your tone is click on the icon, that tone icon, and then choose which tone you want. So let's go with a red or even a purple for our first tone. Our second tone we'll go with kind of a greenish. Then we'll go with a cream or actually let's do peachy I think is how I had. And then we have a white tone as well. So now that those tones are selected, I kind of want to show you how it really works with the Color One Region sliders, because this is probably one of the um, hardest things to understand unless you actually see it visually. So because my Color One Region slider is at zero, it's actually going to be affecting the very darkest parts of my image, which is that zero or black tone. So you can see my dots on my ladybug here are are black but they're now purple because that purple tone is at the black um, is on the black part of the tonal scale He'll, here's before and here's after now the color two and color three are both in the midtone part of the scale and then this color four which is going to be this white is at 255 which is being applied to the white parts of the image. So that's really how it works and you can really play around with your image to see how the blend changes when you move these um, sliders around. As you move, let's say, like this, between your color 1 which is at 0 and your color 2 which is at 174 on your tonal scale, there's going to be a nice blend happening here and you can see that within your image. If I take my you can tell that that purple is going nicely into the greenish color and almost all of the peach has now gone away. Now if I was to kind of go the opposite direction with this and take my peach down here, now I have almost no green, very very little in my midtones here and then lots of white and peach, nice blend happening there. And that's really how the tone works and how you're able to get really advanced toning possibilities. So to give you just the example of the first images that you saw when we started this quick tip webinar, I want to go back to the ladybug one, which I was able to achieve with a little bit of warmth added in. Here's before and after. We'll take that warmth out so you can really see how that tone helped. And then here's the tone before and after. So you added a lot of vintage look, um, ambience, and, and really beautiful warm tones very quickly and easily. And these were the colors that were used. Then we have, let's say, Ladybug 2. Here I added just a bit of coolness into the image. Here's before. Here's after. It's very, very slight. And then my tone shows exactly what tones were used to create this toning. Here's before and here's after. This is really my favorite part of Adjust 5 other than the brush out and the transparency sliders, which are really cool too. But the ability to add in these different tones and really make it your own image and really make it feel like you want it to feel in a very quick way and a very um, advanced technology. It's uh, and very simply as well, very easy to use. It's really um, something that, that I'm pretty excited about for Adjust 5. The last thing I want to show you is this Tone Strength slider. forgot to go over that. Let's go back to the Ladybug one because I think it gives a little bit more obviousness. As you take your Tone Strength slider down, you're bringing less of the original image color into the image. As you bring it up to, towards 1, at 1 it's going to be no tone because you have the full image color coming through. And then as you bring in your tones or take your tone strength down, more of that original color will go away and the tones that you've chosen above will be applied to the tonal ranges with where they're actually selected.
So that is Tone. I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to you and answer a couple questions. If you have any questions, you could type them into your questions module on your GoToWebinar panel. Lonnie wanted me to show the split screen mode. Sure, Lonnie. Sorry, um, I didn't show that while, while going through it. Here we are. Here's Fit. This really gives you an idea of where your image started out with to where it has ended up with. And to get into that split screen mode is up at the top right, this little split screen icon. Okay, let's see here. Oh, Joe. Good question. I do have quite a few other things on this particular preset I created for this image. Um, you can tell exactly what has been done to this image by the check marks. There's a little bit of diffusion in there. There's definitely quite a bit of grain. Here's before. Here's after. There's that warmth that we put into this one. Here's before. Here's after. And then the vignette. Here's before and after. Those are all the finishing touches. This doesn't really go over all the global adjustments that I had done as well using the adaptive exposure, the details, and the curve tool. I have a couple people asking how to create this type of vignette. Well, I actually created a couple presets here for you in the film collection that use this vignette. And you can just come on over here We'll do a white one so you can see it as a white vignette as well. And you can just click on those vintage grunge presets to get that vignette if you want to start off with that vignette on your image. But really all you need to do is have a really high vignette strength. So one is going to be white, negative one is black. Your vignette size uh, can be as large or small as you want it to be. The transition is really how you get this um, very, very a stark transition between your border and your image or your vignette and your image. You can go to zero and it's almost a completely, um, it's a nice look to it right here because there's a tiny bit of transition but it's very, very harsh. And as you take that transition up, it starts to become a more natural vignette. Then you can actually take the curvature as well and change that around to an oval versus a square or right angle type of vignette. So I hope that helps with the vignette. All right, everybody, thanks so much for coming to Quick Tip Thursday. Hope you enjoyed your quick tip, and we'll be talking to you soon. Bye-bye.